welcome to worship here at Beautiful Savior in SeaTac, Washington. As we now have entered into a new church year, entering into the time of Christmas, into the season of Advent, as we join together for our worship, we go into a time looking at that hope that we have, the hope that we have in Jesus, the one who was long waited for. Our midweeks will be going through and looking at the one who was promised, the one who was from the line of Jesse, the King of David, David's greater son. Today, we look at that promise even when hope seems to be gone, the promise that he is there and that he will come again, that we can trust his word even when everything seems to be crumbling around us. As his people, trusting in his word, we join together in God's name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord draws us here. He binds up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The release of those in prison. To comfort all who mourn. To repair the ruined cities. Prepare the way of the Lord. Build a highway for God in the wilderness. As we start our worship, let us join together in prayer. We pray. Holy God, maker of everything, of all thoughts, of everything we see around us, of everything we do not see, we come before you praying that you would open our hearts this day, that we may know your presence in this time, that we may know your hope and your peace in this place. Restore us now, that we may see that special gift, that calling to hope, faith, love, and peace. We pray, Lord, that you would give us the eyes to see you, the one who has masterfully created us, molded us, and has called us to be your people. Help us to be ready for your return, that we would know that you are among us, renewing us and creating us with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. We turn to our choir at this time as they sing their praises from their home, giving us songs of joy as we light our Advent wreath, looking forward to the celebration of the birth of Christ. We turn now to our choir. Isaiah chapter 64, starting at verse 1. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, and when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. Who acts on behalf of those who wait for him? You come to, help, to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways, but when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. 
How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who was unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shriveled up like a leaf, and like the wind of our sins sweeps us away, no one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray. For we are all your people. First Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 3. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech, and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful Who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord? God would rip open the heavens and come down to fix the mess that we see, the mess that we experience, the mess that we feel, and the mess that we are inside. Oh, that he would come down from his throne on high and fix all that we know is wrong, all that goes against him. This is what we rejoice in, that we do not just have a hope that is waiting for him to do this, but that we know that he has, that God has come to his people He has come to us while we were trapped, stuck, and sunken in our sins. And so, let us turn to him confessing our sins. For if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. O Lord God, as As we we begin begin to prepare prepare our hearts to receive the one whom you are sending, forgive us for all the times we have missed seeing you in our midst, for all the times we have doubted your presence, for all the times we have failed to help others find their way. Forgive us in the name of Jesus, the one who is coming. Amen. Be filled with joy in the one who has come for you. Be filled with joy in the one who has restored you and has promised to come again to bring you to his everlasting life. The one who has come to forgive you of all of your sins, to renew that relationship that you have with Jesus, with God on high, as a called and ordained servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and in his stead and by his command, I announce to you the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rejoice that we have a God who has restored you, who has given you a greater future than we could ever imagine. We read responsively our psalm of the day. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, and our tongues with songs of of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like the streams of the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carry seeds to sow. We We return return with songs songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray to God. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise your name that you sent your Son to rule over us while we were poor sinners, that you forgave our transgressions that we deserved and were in bondage to sin, to Satan, and to ourselves. Help us, Lord, seek you in meekness as you came in meekness. Help us see you as the righteous king, the one whose death made us righteous. We turn to you for enlightenment, to govern, direct, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We pray that you would keep us faithful to our righteous King and Savior, not after the manner of this world, but instead the King that came humbly in a form that was despised, but yet was the Word made flesh. We pray for his eternal salvation in us and to those around us. In Jesus' name we pray who was and is and is to come, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us lift up our voices, praising God for what he has done. I also encourage you at this time to greet each other with his peace, knowing that we have a peace that goes beyond anything that we can see here on earth. God's peace to you at this time. Our gospel reading from the day, from the gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter, where we hear Jesus say, But in those days, following the distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, And he will send his angels and gather his elect 
from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all of these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It is like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. At this time, we continue with our children's message. And know what? For many of you, I'm sure you have spent a lot of time now in your homes. You probably have gotten very, very used to your houses, whether you're doing school at home, whether you've been spending more time in your home, whether you've been seeing your family a lot more. You probably have gotten very used to seeing the same stuff around your house. But from what I've been seeing on Facebook, some of your houses have been changing, maybe this week, maybe since the beginning of November, that there's now new things that are coming up. And I've heard that some of you already have a Christmas tree up since the beginning of November. For you now have Christmas decorations up. You can see that we have our decorations up here at the church. And I know that once a Christmas tree goes up, it's only a matter of time before you start seeing presents. Presents that start coming up underneath that tree. And you might go and look and see your name on one of them. Oh, that could be very, very, very aggravating, frustrating, annoying, because you have a gift. That's your gift. You know your name, but you can't open it. You can't open it until Christmas. That can be a lot of times how our hope feels. Today we are talking about the hope that we have. We know that Jesus has done amazing things for you. And he says there will be a day that you will get to see that joy. You have that joy like a gift underneath a Christmas tree. We're just waiting for him to return. And so when you look at all of those gifts under your tree that you have to wait on, you know that one day you're going to get to open them. Just like we have hope for when Jesus comes back. And he will bring great, great news for you. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for all of your gifts, for the gifts of faith, for the gifts of Jesus, for the gifts of life with you forever. Help us keep watch for that day when we can open up those gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, let us join together confessing that faith that we have, the faith that we share together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. join together in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for this sermon. We pray for those listening to it. We pray for your word to continue to grow in us, to grow in that faith that we have, to grow in what you have done for us, that we would continue to have hope in what you have said. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I know for many people, a common phrase that have started to come up is, what else can this year throw at us? What else can 2020 give to you? How much more can you put on your plate? For some, they have started making bingo cards of things that they think will happen next. And now that we have basically a month left of the year 2020, how much left can really happen? What else can this year truly throw at you? And let us now turn to the words that we have from Jesus this day. A reading that we have today starts off like this. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Yeah, yeah, I guess that also could happen this year. 
that would definitely be something that I'm sure many of you are not expecting on your bingo cards if you're following along with that game. Having the sky fall down upon you, having the sun and the moon, the stars and the sky go dark, having literally heavenly bodies being shaken and falling from their place in God's celestial plan, that, that definitely would be a twist for this year. But there is probably a whole lot more than we can say because as we look at this, we hear of the end of times. We hear of the end of the world. And this is something that we both long to hear more about and don't want to hear more about. There is never really a good time to hear about the end of the world. There is never really a time that you look and say, yeah, this is a good, appropriate time to talk about the end of everything as we know it. On the other side of things, though, every generation has looked and said that their generation, that time right here, right now, is the end. We look at songs, we look at books, we look at fiction, we look at nonfiction. Everything tells us about how the end will come. A couple of years ago, we heard about the Mayan calendar and how it ended. We hear about the end, whether that be through natural disasters, whether that be through artificial disasters, whether that be man-made disasters. We hear in science fiction about how the end will come in many different ways. And people can get quite creative in all the different ways that the end of times will come about. Many people, this becomes what they focus in when they read God's word, that all they look at, what they hear, what they hope in, is the end. It can be rather a bleak, uncertain time. But I want to take it a different step back, because the end of the known world around us doesn't need to be the only way we can hear Jesus' words today. Because as we enter into the holiday season, now that Thanksgiving has passed, and now that I think we counted six different radio stations that we hear on our drive that have Christmas music now playing, how much of your world feels like it is in darkness? How much darkness do you have going on right now? Whether this be the sky literally going dark as we enter into December soon, and we see that there is just not as much sunlight we see that the sun is not shining as much as it once did. And you don't get your vitamin D. You don't get as much of that sun that gives you that boost into your mood. And we're not going outside as much anyways, and so you're not getting the sun that is there. Or maybe, just maybe, there are other things going on. Maybe this year and everything at his throne has given you an emotional darkness that you feel weighted upon you. Maybe you're going through the difficulties of everything and you just feel burdened. You can feel the darkness pressing in upon you and you feel life continuing to sink down upon you with everything it's thrown. Perhaps you feel like your world is shaken. You feel like the ground under your very feet is shaking and falling through. As there's been a time where families are not gathering as much as they once did a time where how much you gather now can be a time of anxiety. Whether you're feeling guilty for gathering with your families, whether you feel guilty for not gathering in your families, whether you feel angry because you gathered or didn't gather or being told to or not to, and you can feel pulled so many different ways. And all of this, the anxiety, the weightiness, the emotional drain can become too much to bear. And now we throw the holiday season into that mix. The time of the year where, with all of its saccharine sweetness, we seem to like to put a gloss of sugar-coated paint over how much despair there can be in people's lives, no matter what year it is. No matter what year it is, you can just feel drained, depressed, down and out, left out. The number of people that deal with depression this time of year, the number of people that deal with deep sorrow, the number of people that deal with the pain and agony of loss, whether that be not having a family, loved ones that are gone, people that aren't in your life or no one to share with, or feeling like you don't match up. You don't match up because either you're not earning enough, doing enough, giving enough, and the drain that everything can just continue to pile on we can see just how much 
we end up feeling like the world can just be falling apart all around us. And as we go into the time of Advent, we turn to the words of Jesus as he talks about the end of the actual world, as he talks about the end of everything that we see, everything we know, everything that God created, where it continues to fall apart. We are reminded that, yes, there will be an end. There will be an end to all of the pain, the agony, the things that we see that are breaking. But he doesn't do this, as we heard a couple of weeks past, with the idea of how much breaking there is with people that are going through and looking and maybe not looking to that final judgment. He doesn't do this with the idea of go and make sure you are doing or acting or behaving. Instead, he does it with hope. He talks about the end of the world. He talks about the end of everything, and he gives to you hope. For with that news of the end of everything, and in that time of great distress, we hear him promise, at that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. Instead, what Jesus gives to us is that promise of his return, of his return when he will come and gather you up, when he will gather his people up and send his angels to be there for you. When everything seems to be completely dark and bleak, when everything is completely dark and bleak, whether it is the literal end of the world or just your emotional end of the world. God is still greater. God is still there for you. You still have hope in him, and he promises that he will gather you up. He promises that he will be there for you. And he promises that even in the deepest darkness, he is there. We talk about him as the God of Sabaoth, the God of angel armies, the God who is there for you with armies and armies of angels. Here he talks about that implementation of those armies, the armies that come to gather and sweep you up. And this is where we gather and hear that promise. And so, in whatever you are going through, In this time of Advent, as we look forward to Jesus' first coming, as we look to that celebration of Christmas, we gather together today to rediscover hope, to hear of that hope that we have, not just in a hope as the world sees it, but in a hope in what God has done for you. For you have a hope, a hope that is based upon a God who is there after, during, and before all of the darkness that the world can seem to throw at you. We remember that even when life is going against you, Jesus calls us to remember the fig tree, that when you see these signs, know that he is there. When you feel like you are oppressed, depressed, when you are going through times where you are stressed, he is there, that the end is near, that he is for you and not against you that he is the one who continues to conduct and orchestrate all things, that all things are in his hand. And this is the hope that we have and share. This is the hope that we gather in as we go through this time preparing for Christmas, being reminded of why it is such wonderful news, why it is such wonderful news for you, because God doesn't abandon you. God doesn't leave his people. As we look to the season of Christmas, we look and remember that God's people for 400 years hadn't heard from God. They were waiting for that Messiah and waiting with hope, saying God's promise will come true. And it did. It did one day in an unexpected way. God promises that that same joy will be known even greater when all people will see him return. All people will see him that final day. And it's even more than that. For when we doubt ourselves, whether it's the world, whether it's the devil, whether it's the darkness you're feeling, or whether it's yourself, God gives us something even greater. For we look to what Jesus says, and he promises that even when all of these things are going on, even when all of this darkness is all around you, his word is eternal. 
This is why we can have hope in him. Because he is the one that fulfills his promises, that does what he set out to do, that does what he promises for you. And he does it. Not because we deserve it, but because of who he is and what he has done. We look to those promises of how he has continually been faithful to his word. Remember that he is faithful to his word to you. The words that he speaks to you, the words that his Bible, the words that we have and received continue to proclaim to you. The words that have been said over you when you were baptized, the words that have been said when you receive his forgiveness, the words that we continue to hear and receive when we gather. This is what we will be going through in our season of Advent as we gather for our midweeks and our Bible studies, looking how God took out of nothing, out of the stump of Jesse, and he was able to produce life the life that gives you hope now and for the world that is yet to come. And so know that God is for you. Know that he is there and that his word is eternal. Cling to those promises. Cling to his word. Cling to what he has said over what darkness you might feel pressing in upon you. And we look to his final word that he says in our reading today. That with all of these things, with all that we say and do, What are we called to do? It is to wait, to watch, and be ready. Join us as we gather to be ready and wait, to gather and see the signs that he has prepared for us, to gather and be in his word that is eternal, the word that gives us hope no matter what is going on in the storms of life. In the name of our Lord, who is the word made flesh, amen. couple of announcements for you as we continue on gathering, to, gathering both online and in many new and various ways. First of all, after our service today at 10.30, we will be gathering on Zoom and on Facebook for our Bible study. Bible study information is being sent out through our email system. If you are not on that, please let us know. As we will be gathering, connected in those ways. This is something that we can rejoice in where we will be looking at how his word has been fulfilled, how we have hope in him, and how he was able to fulfill that promise, the promise of a Messiah that is to come. As we also continue to join, we will be gathering on on the uh, Wednesdays at 6 o'clock for our midweeks. These will be on Facebook, on YouTube, and all the ways we've been continuing to gather as we get to rejoice and be ready, preparing our hearts and minds for him, preparing ourselves for what he has done. Join us for this time as we look at Jesse's tree and continue on celebrating that we have a God who is there for us. At this time as well, we know that our youth have been working for our kids program. That will be coming up soon. Our choir has been continuing lifting up their praises to God. We continue to find new ways that we can gather rejoicing in God. Join us on Tuesdays for our coffee hour as we have time where we get to have those chances to have Christian fellowship with each other. And in all of these different ways, as we continue on praising him for what he has done, there are so many gifts that he continues to pour out in our lives. As we gather our tithes and our offerings, lifting up praises to him for his gifts that he gives to us, we are reminded that we are just returning what he has done. Let us join together as we give thanks to God for all of those gifts and ask his blessings on those gatherings of tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we give you but your own. We'd ask for your wisdom in how we conduct ourselves. We ask your wisdom for everything we say and do. We ask your blessing on the gifts that are offered here at Beautiful Savior. We'd ask that you would continue to help us see the needs around us and how we can reach out and help them. We'd ask that we would use those gifts wisely with good stewardship, that we would see you as the center of everything that we are. In Jesus' name, amen.
At this time, we join together in prayer, praying for those needs that we see around us, praying for the needs that we have, praying for the needs that God calls us to see and hear in our lives. If you have prayer requests, we encourage you to let us know, and we will include them here at Beautiful Savior. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To you, Lord Jesus, we lift up our soul. In you do we place our trust and our hope. Do not let us be put to shame, but instead let your hope come quickly. Let our hope be found in your holy word. Let your Holy Spirit give us joy in this time. As we gather throughout the season of Advent, waiting for the advent of Christ, let your hope shine in the midst of darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, enrich your saints, enrich your people in every nation and every place. We ask that you would continue to give a spirit of outreach, a spirit of wisdom, that your Holy Spirit will continue to be upon your people that they would become brave to proclaim your word, to preach your word to all who would hear, that that hope of Christ would be confirmed in us and through us. Give us boldness. Give us faithfulness. We pray for our synodical president, for our district president, for our circuit visitors, for the pastors all around the world, for those that continue to teach, for our director and our teachers here at Beautiful Savior. We pray that you would continue to give them courage, peace, and joy in their labors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, preserve and bless our households. Be with husbands and wives. Be with those that continue to serve each other as you have placed them together. We give joy for that gift of children and pray for Laura, Laura and Krista as they rejoice in their pregnancies. Strengthen them for the days ahead and bless them as they prepare for that new life that you have given to them. Equip them and equip all of us to serve those that you have placed in our lives, to serve our neighbors as we serve ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, be with those that you have given the sword to, the governing authorities, those that continue to serve and look out for us and over us, those that you have given to preserve peace justice and order in all nations. We pray for our president, our governors, our military, our police, our first responders, our civil servants, our doctors, nurses, and staff, those that are newly elected into office, those that continue to serve on a community level. We pray, Lord, for peace in our land and throughout the world, a peace not as the world brings, but a peace where your word would flourish. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, who knows the darkness that presses in around us, have mercy on those that are in deep trouble, those that are going through times of sickness, those that are going through times of grieving, those that are going through times of need, those that are going through times of worry of both body, mind, and soul. We pray for those that are sick and suffering, including Dorothy, Lisa, and Lida. We pray, Lord, for those that continue to seek healing for the world for those that continue to help in this pandemic, bring comfort for all of those that mourn as they grieve the loss of a loved one. We'd ask that you would be with those that seek employment, those that are struggling with homelessness, those that are struggling with underemployment and finances. Let your hope and confidence of a restoration of all things be with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, you have given all judgment to your Son, who promises that his word will not pass away, but is eternal. Grant us that ability of your Holy Spirit to hold fast to his word, to hold fast to what he says. 
over what we think and instead to look at his testament of that resurrection of all things that may sustain us, lead us to repentance, lead us to saving faith, and unite us in true confession. Help us always look to him as our hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear those needs that we lift up to you now from the bottom of our hearts, those needs that you promise that you already know before we even ask. Hear us as we lift them up to you silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we trust in your mercy. We trust for all the things that we pray. Hear us now as we pray as you taught us, Lord Jesus. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on on earth earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us lift up our voices in songs of praise.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. People of God, we wait with hope. We wait with courage. We wait with joy that is unspeakable, full of glory and full of God's grace. We wait with the assurance that Jesus is the liberator, the one that came with power and justice and in peace. Go now in his blessing that the Lord bless you and keep you, that the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, that the Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Join us as we continue on celebrating Advent with our Bible studies and with our midweeks. God's peace to you. Go in his peace as you serve the Lord.